What's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia, back with another top 10 video here at Fantasy Pros MLB. Don't forget to like this video, share, and subscribe to the channel because we're the best place to find fantasy baseball information and entertainment. And before you know it, we're going to be live every single day with leading off. So make sure you join us for the fun right here on the channel. And speaking of fun, I love a good bargain, don't you? I think we all do. Now, sometimes bargains can go a little too far in the other direction, like don't go to the dollar store and order sushi. That would be stupid. But sometimes, just sometimes, there are some guys that are floating around there late in drafts that could really be huge assets. And last year, we gave you a ton of great ones, including Lane Thomas and a few others that were really outstanding. So this year, we're going to do it again, just like Abrams, just like Thomas last year. We're going to go back to that well, and I'm going to try to give you some names to draft and put on your rosters and reap the benefits. In the meantime, if you want a chance to win a signed Jazz Chisholm Miami Marlins jersey, courtesy of bettingpros.com, your place to start betting smarter, not harder. All you need to do is subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel right now. Comment below in this video, and that's it. That jersey can be yours. We'll be announcing the winner of the Jazz Chisholm jersey right here on the channel, so make sure you turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes drop and you can claim your prize. All right, everybody, let's give some of these players a home on your rosters. Here are my favorite draft day bargains for 2024. Let's kick things off here with number 10, Junior Caminero at ADP of 202, Tampa Bay Rays infielder. Now, Caminero certainly looks like the future when it comes to the left side of the infield for the Tampa Bay Rays. If you go back to last year's minor league numbers, they were pretty good between double A and high A last year. He posted a slash of 324, 384 with a 591 slugging and a 976 OPS. How about those 31 homers in 117 games to boot? Now, look, there might be a scenario where he spends a month or two potentially here with the minor league club again at triple A for the Rays. However, I think it's only a matter of time. You did see them bring him up for seven games last year in 2023. There's really nothing stopping him from becoming the everyday shortstop for this team sooner than later. As of right now, Jose Caballero is the only thing standing in his way. And I just don't think when it comes to Caminero that there's going to be too much of a roadblock going forward. He is the heir apparent there for the shortstop job. I know he plays third base too, but until Paredes has moved on from, it's probably gonna be shortstop or bust for Caminero. So draft him right now. Remember that the season is long and Caminero could have at least four months potentially of good productivity for your fantasy team. Coming in at number nine at an ADP of 210, Shoto Imanaga, Chicago Cubs starting pitcher. Now the Cubs Japanese import is 30 years old and a left-handed pitcher did have an excellent eight-year career in the Japanese professional league, putting up a 296 ERA with a 1.08 whip and a 26% strikeout rate over a thousand plus innings. While his old league mate Yamamoto is getting all of the hype, Imanaga might be a really solid back of the rotation fantasy starter for you and for the Cubs this year in 2024. Imanaga is going to be able to probably get off to a good start. As we all know, it takes a while for the league to adjust to some of these guys sometimes. And if anything, we have to worry maybe about the latter part of the season when it comes to Imanaga, because we also know there's a difference in routine between the States and Japan. So if you draft Imanaga at this discount, and he has a good start to the season. You could even flip him in a package to upgrade for the latter part of the season. But regardless, he's coming at an extreme value for somebody that you know is locked into a rotation spot, who you also know is in his prime at 30 years old. So I like Imanaga as a nice piece of my fantasy rotation, and you should too, in 2024. Number eight on our list is another foreign import. This one from the KBO, and it's Jung Hu Lee, San Francisco outfielder, coming in at an ADP of 220 currently on Fantasy Pros. Lee's productivity in the KBO suggests that he could even contend for a batting title in 2024. And you add in the fact that he's probably going to hit number one in this lineup for the Giants. That means a ton of runs, a ton of extra plate appearances, which is great in any head-to-head -head format on a weekly basis. Yeah, sure, it'll hurt his RBI potential, but at the same time, he should come close to double-digit stolen bases in America. He is a lock for probably somewhere around 10 home runs, probably, as every projection system has him going double digits there. He might not help you in RBI, but this could be a four-category contributor for your leagues, and especially in those head-to-head -head points leagues, this is a guy that could rack up points over and over and over again with his great on-base skills coming off a year when KBO, where he had a 406 on-base percentage, that's not too shabby there. So this is a player who can come in, 
get on base right away, get some runs for the Giants, be a spark at the top of the lineup, and a huge value for you on draft day. Coming in at number seven on our list, it's Andrew Abbott, Cincinnati Reds starting pitcher at an ADP of 226. Now, Andrew Abbott last year had 109 innings for the big club with the Reds. He had a 3.87 ERA. He won eight games over that span with 120 strikeouts and just 44 walks over that period. Now, a lot of the underlying metrics when it comes to Abbott are a little concerning. Yes, the XFIP was higher, so was the XERA than the actual ERA. But at the same time, if you go back and look what this kid was doing at AAA, it looks like he might have really turned the corner as a pitcher, generally speaking. He had a 3.05 ERA in his seven AAA starts last year, and he also had a 12.7 K per nine rate. That is astronomical. So although there is some concern with some of those underlying numbers, as I mentioned before, there's also the opportunity for growth for Andrew Abbott in 2024, where he could be once again a very undervalued starter for a Cincinnati Reds ball club that is really starting to emerge and get people really excited around baseball. So Abbott's one of these guys to take a shot on late because the upside is there, as is the strikeout potential. Coming in at number six on our list, Ryan Mountcastle, first base slash DH of the Baltimore Orioles at an ADP of 243. Not everything here on this list is about upside. Sometimes it's just about boring old floor. And Ryan Mountcastle gives you that. He is pretty much locked into the DH spot, most likely, for the season for the Baltimore Orioles in a lineup that's pretty good. It includes Adley Rutschman, Gunnar Henderson, and a lot of young, exciting prospects on their way. Mountcastle feels like a guy you can lock in for 20-plus homers, probably going to drive in somewhere around 85 runs every year, and that's what he had done the previous two seasons before missing some time in 2023. So at 27 years old, Ryan Mountcastle might even have another 30 home run season ahead of him, considering he is entering his prime and this lineup is getting better around him. However, even if he doesn't reach 30 homers, I think you're looking at a player who is a lock for at least 25. Again, the runs are going to be there. The batting average will probably be somewhere in the 260 range in 2024, as many projection systems have him floating around 255 to 265. And I think Mountcastle is one of these guys you can lock into a utility spot Feel good about that bat all season long and just set it and forget it. And when you get outside the top 200 players at ADP, I think that's something that you should value a little bit more than most. Let's stay in Baltimore for number five on our list. Starting pitcher John Means at ADP of 252. Now, John Means is going to be ramped up slowly here coming off Tommy John surgery for the 2024 season, and it's affecting his ADP already. And I think you should take advantage of that fact. And here's why. We already know Kyle Bradish is going to start the year potentially on the shelf with a UCL injury. We all know that could be a very tenuous situation. And if you go back and look at the last time we saw John Means in 2021 healthy, it's a pretty good season. Is he blowing people away with the strikeout rate? No, it's just 8.2K per nine. But over his 146 innings and 26 starts in 2021, this guy had a 1.6 walk rate and a 1.03 whip. This guy can help you with ERA, he can help you with your whip, he can help you get Ws, and probably be a decent enough strikeout artist to at least help you out in a league average sort of sense. This is a good Baltimore team that is going to compete for the American League East, and I think John Means is going to be one of these solid guys in the middle of that Baltimore rotation that can be a solid or back-end starter in your fantasy lineup too, because every single week when he takes the ball, he's going to have a shot at a quality start, so pay attention in those formats that reward quality starts, and not to mention... John Means at 31 years old, probably still in his prime. So as long as he's healthy, take advantage of the late ramp up for John Means. Don't let a slow start in April deter you from a pitcher that could help you for five of the six months in your fantasy rotation. Number four, Mason Miller, relief pitcher of the Oakland A's coming in at ADP of 266. Mason Miller has electric stuff. We're talking about huge strikeout potential. The problem is... He's also a big injury risk, so the A's have pivoted and said that he is going to be a relief pitcher. That's perfectly fine, because that still helps us out in fantasy, and we want this kid to be throwing innings, not sitting on the IL. Now, he may open up the season in a closer by committee situation, but it is hard to imagine a scenario where Miller does not get the bulk of the saves for the A's in 2024. He's already projected on most sites to get somewhere between 18 and 20 saves, and that's only if he takes the job most likely in the last four months of the season. But if he starts out of the gate in April, name the closer, 
my goodness, Mason Miller could be a huge value in any format where you're trying to chase saves. You know the strikeout potential is going to be there because it's off the charts. And honestly, the best way to keep this kid healthy is to let him go out there in a clean ninth inning, get three outs, and then come back and do it tomorrow. And then there's going to be days where he won't be able to pitch back to back or three days in a row. You'll have to manage that situation with Mason Miller, but what you get in return is probably well worthy of that trade-off. Number three, outfielder slash DH, Brent Rooker of the Oakland A's coming in at ADP of 250. Now, Brent Rooker last year kind of came out of nowhere and was the middle of the order threat that people were waiting for in that Oakland A's lineup, which let's be honest, was not super exciting. What was exciting was his 30 homers, 69 RBI and 61 runs scored over 137 games. Now, he did hit just 246 over that span. However, Rooker is a pure power guy. If you look at the minor league track record, he had a slugging percentage of 543 over 400 minor league games. Yes, he's a bit of a journeyman. He's been in a few organizations, including Minnesota, San Diego, Kansas City. I've been everywhere, but you know what? Maybe it's Oakland where he finally gets that shot and he is slated to hit right in the three hole this year. That's a great opportunity for RBIs, for runs, for power productivity. So you'll take the lower batting average because he is a career 230 minor league hitter. And instead you'll look for the power and hope that he can give you another 30 over 140, 150 games potentially in 2024. So late in the draft, you need a little more pop in your lineup. Brent Rooker could be a great way to fill that need. Coming in at number two, Taj Bradley, starting pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays, clocking in at an ADP of 287. Taj Bradley was forced into a situation last year before he was possibly developmentally ready for it. With all the injuries to the Rays rotation in April, it seemed like Taj Bradley was brought up and thrown into the fire, and it's sometimes he did get burned, so did the Rays. But if you look at what he did back in 2022, at AA, his 16 starts, he was magical with a 1.7 ERA. Then getting bumped up to AAA that year for 12 starts, a 3.66 ERA. So things were going on the right trajectory. He probably should have cooked for half a season somewhere in AAA last year, but unfortunately, circumstances did not allow that. So over 104 innings, he did post a disappointing 5.59 ERA. However, that strikeout rate at 11.1 was still very strong and very much in line with the pitcher that we are excited about. Turning just 23 years old in 2024, Taj Bradley is going to be at the back end of this Rays rotation, and there's not a lot of guys that have this upside for strikeout potential this late in the draft. The Rays have always been really good at developing young pitching, so I think last year was just a confluence of events where things got rushed a little bit and he wasn't quite ready, but after taking his lumps in 2023 and having a fresh offseason, I think there's potential for Bradley to come in and grossly outperform this current ADP. He's a young live arm on a good team, so take a shot on Taj Bradley in all your drafts. And number one, Heston Kierstad of the Baltimore Orioles, the outfielder coming in at an ADP of, well, 400 something. And the reason for that is he's still a prospect that is waiting to make his impact. He did get a little cup of coffee for a few at-bats last year with the Orioles, but Kierstad is very exciting to me because I don't think there's going to be a scenario where he does not contribute to the big league club this year. What's holding him back? Well, Cedric Mullins, who underperformed last year, maybe even Austin Hayes, and I just don't see those roadblocks holding up very long. Not to mention, we all know it's a long baseball season, injuries happen. Why am I so excited about Kierstad? Well, how about over 187 minor league games, an elite level slash of 305, 382, 504. That, my friends, is rarefied air. This guy has hit everywhere all the time from his college career all the way through the minor leagues, and he is literally knocking on the door with that bat to come in for the Orioles and be the next in a long line of these prospects that are reshaping that organization. If it's a deep league, I want Heston Kierstad. If it's a shallow league and I have the bench room, I'm willing to draft and stash him because I just don't see a scenario where he doesn't play the bulk of his games in 2024 in Baltimore. So let's go at the end of that draft. Let's take that last pick, make a Kierstad, and then be patient and wait and reap the benefits of a hitter that's going to make a huge impact when he does show up in the big leagues. And that time, my friends, is coming sooner than you think. Well, there you have it. Those are the names outside the top 280p that I think are very helpful for all of your rosters. But if you've got some names you wanna share with me, by all means, go ahead, drop your comments below, drop those names in 
the chat. I want to hear from all of you out there on our Fantasy Pros MLB channel. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to let goes ding for notifications, and hang out with us all MLB season long because fantasy baseball never sleeps. And I'm starting to think I don't either. That'll do it for me, Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.